You know what's really frustrating is how hard it is to find out what the salary is for different majors. Because when you're picking a major, you want to know what to expect when you're making money, especially when you're spending so much on tuition, on housing, on books. You want to know what's on the other side of graduation, but it can be so hard. Well, I'm going to show you a little secret about how to get an idea of what certain majors pay. But it's a secret your professors don't really want you to know. I know as a professor myself, I'm a little nervous telling you the secret. Here's the secret. Look at your professor's salary. I think it's important and it has some really important economics lessons to show you. And that's what we're about here on Market Power. My name is Craig and we're here talking about the power of markets and economics to shape our world. And compensation is just right there at the center of economics. What I want to show you in this video is some of the economics behind this secret that I'm going to tell you. And then I'm going to give you actual data. I'm going to show you real data about earnings by major. I'm going to try and convince you that this secret that I have actually will help you decide about your major. Maybe not decide, but at least inform you about what to expect from different majors. It's pretty easy to find salaries linked with jobs, but jobs aren't directly connected to majors. So that connection from major to job to salary gets kind of broken up. So it's gonna be really hard to find out what your salary is by your major. And this is actually something a lot of majors don't even wanna reveal. When you go to study, when you get to an education, you're supposed to be there for the, the value of learning, for the purity of that. Salary should be the farthest from your mind. And you know, in some regards, I understand that. But when we're asking you to pay huge tuition for you to get this enlightened experience, then we should at least be giving you some expectation of what to get paid. you're going to get paid. And you know, if you're deciding between two majors and you're going into big debt for both of these, you might want to know which one is going to give you a better chance at paying off that debt or providing for your family. So we need a secret. We need a way to get around this connection between majors and salary. Why can't we find it? It's really hard to make that connection. What can we do to get around that? Here's the secret. Look at your professor's salary. Now, this isn't gonna be possible in every situation, but most public universities, they're required to report their salaries publicly. Now, they don't report them personally, but since they're paid by the state, then the state releases employee compensation data. You can actually go in for many states and look at employee compensation. So, like the entire University of California education system, you can look up the salary of just about any professor in a UC system, and you would be able to find out exactly how much they make. Uh, you can see a little bit about benefits. It depends on the different reporting, but you can find out their compensation. Now, let's think about the economics behind this because you probably don't want to become a professor. Maybe you do. I'm excited if you do. I love my job, but you probably don't want to become a professor. So isn't this just another, oh, we can find out a certain job and what that salary is, but I want to know something else. I want to know what I'm get, gonna get by my major. Well, think about what a professor is. A professor is really the epitome of a major. This is somebody who's highly trained, who's gone in depth into that specific area. And then they got a job in that area. This is representing the, the knowledge and skill that comes with going into that major, but it goes even further. This is where we talk about the economics of the outside option. What is the outside option? Well, the labor market for professors is a competitive labor market. Okay, so what does a competitive labor market mean? It means that if I don't wanna pay you what you're worth and somebody else does, then that person can come in and take you away from me. They'll, they'll offer you the wage you deserve, the compensation you deserve, and you're gone, right? Think about this. If I have the opportunity to make $1 million in, for a company and a university offers me $30,000 to come teach for them, like I have to like teaching a lot to give up that $1 million to go for the $30,000. So the private market is my outside option. That is, if I'm not doing this job as a professor, what job could I go get? And my salary has to be tied at least a little bit to that. It has to be tied to the fact that I could be getting a pretty good wage in a different company 
if I wasn't being a professor. And so we can actually go through and look at professors in different majors and say, what is their outside option? If they weren't teaching, this their salary must reflect their opportunities outside of a university. And that's gonna give us at least a proxy for what you can make as you go into that major. So how are we gonna do this? Well, like I said, a lot of these universities make this data publicly available. And so I went through and got data from a public university, which will remain unnamed. And then I linked it up to a faculty directory that gave me that person's name and their department. So that way I could figure out salary, connect it to the department that they're in, give me a representation of salaries by major. And this isn't just salary. I keep saying salary. I'm sorry, I keep slipping. This is total compensation. So it's gonna include salary. It's gonna include like health benefits. It's also gonna include contributions to retirement. So that's called total compensation. And we want that, right? Like. You don't want to just look at salary and ignore benefits because benefits can be really important. So we're gonna look at total compensation and then we're just gonna look at it across majors. And so let me just go ahead and show you the data. Right off, when you look at this graph, you can see there's a pretty big gradient between the lowest paid major and the highest paid major. So let's go ahead and look at the lowest paid majors and then we'll make our way up to the highest paid majors. At the bottom, which is the top here, I guess, but the lowest paid majors, probably not a lot of big surprises. You're seeing a lot of languages, you're seeing history, you're seeing art. That probably doesn't surprise you, but it's nice to put numbers to this. Now their total compensation, a little over $100,000, but again, that includes salary, healthcare, retirement funds, okay? But then as you keep going, you're gonna see maybe some majors are catching your eye, as you get to the top, you're gonna to see it is dominated by the majors in the business school. And this, in a university context, makes sense. Universities with business schools pay a lot to get their faculty because their faculty have a lot of options. Like right at the top of this is accounting and accounting is blowing everybody out of the water. Well, if you're at the top of the accounting game, what are your options? You could go work for these big four accounting firms. You have, you can be making lots and lots of money. And so to convince you to come teach, they have to pay you a lot. You know, management, MIS, economics, economics is right up there, right? They're, they're not too far behind. And that's because, you know, I could be out there working for Amazon, Netflix, I could be working on Wall Street. I have a lot of options outside of the university. It's just that accounting, really good outside options for them. So they're making the most. All right, I'm willing to admit that. You know, you also have to pay them a lot to convince them to do something so boring as accounting. I'm willing to take a lower salary to do something fun and interesting like economics. Now, one of the problems with the data that we're seeing here is we're seeing a mix of senior people and junior people. Like it's hard to know how much of this is driven by people that are have been around for a long time, how much of it is driven by just new professors. So what we can do is we can actually compare the junior professors and the senior professors. I'm gonna try and get at least to some fields that are similar. Let's look at social sciences. I'm talking about economics, history, uh, psychology, political science, right? Like these, these areas of study that are actually pretty similar. Assistant professors are brand new professors. They've been out for typically less than six years. The assistant professors in economics are blowing everybody out of the water. And you have much lower salaries for these other social sciences. Now, as you go down to the professors, full professors are people who have been around for typically at least 10 years. And sometimes they've been around for much longer than that. So these, this gives us an idea of kind of the peak earnings, these people, the experience they get. And you see that economics is still dominating. But the thing that's curious to me is that these senior people, these people who've been around for a long time, aren't even making as much as the brand new economics professors. Like that gives you a sense of the value of some majors where a brand new person has such good outside options that they're being paid more than somebody who's been around 
for a long time. Now, how much should, trust should we put in this data? Does this actually tell us anything about the salaries that you can expect when you graduate in one of these majors? Well, just recently, the Department of Education has released some data on the median salary that graduates make one year out of college. And so I actually grabbed some of that data for this specific university. So that way I can match it and get real apples to apples comparison found their majors, found the professors in their major, and I just plotted the average major again, or the average compensation for professors in that major with one year graduation rates, their salaries in that major. It's very clear to see there's a pretty tight relationship. The more that a professor makes, the more money the students in that major are making. So this is like pretty good evidence that you can look at your professor's salaries, especially within your school, comparing professors at your school. You can say, hey, if I want to major in history or if I want to major in economics and study history while I'm majoring in economics, which you should do, you're going to get, you have a lot more opportunities available to you on the economics path than you do the history path. And so I hope that this is something that has helped you as you're thinking about what major, the salaries that you could be making. I'm doing tons of videos on majoring in economics because you really should be majoring in economics. If you're interested in that, I'll put some of the videos up here. If you're interested in learning more about economics, please subscribe because we've got great videos coming out. We'll see you in the future on Market Power.